Time to take stock. Praise the Lord. Time to take stock. I'm taking the Bible text for this morning from the book of Lamentations chapter 3 verse 40. Lamentations 3 verse 40. Are we there? He says, um, in King James Version, it says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. In Message Version, which is the one I like very well, he says, let's take a good look at the way we're living and reorder our lives under God. Amplified Version says, let us test and examine our ways and let us return to the Lord. Let us take a good look at the way we're living and let us reorder our lives under God. What does it mean to take stock? What does it mean? dictionary will define it. It says it is to review an overall assessment of a particular situation with a purpose, with a sole aim as a prelude to taking a decision. You want to take a decision, you take stock, you review, you assess, you appraise, you evaluate. How far have I gone? So that I can make a decision based on it. That is what it means to take stock. Before we begin to take stock, you know, we're doing it in two ways take stock, think back of the blessings of the Lord in your life this year. What, take stock when you look back and you begin to compare, you, you see the things you think you haven't had and the things you have had, you will know that God has been good to us. Praise the Lord. But we're going to appraise ourselves because that's God's appraiser. God has been good. He's always good. He would always be good. We're going to appraise ourselves on our own part because it's a two-way thing. God has, you know, a responsibility for us. We also have what we're supposed to be doing. So we're taking stock of, our, of, our, of what we're supposed to be doing. But I start by saying, who has to take stock? Who is the that has to take stock? Five points under that. Someone who has a goal. Somebody who has a target. Somebody who has a cause, like Apostle Paul said, my cause, I finished my cause. Somebody who is going somewhere needs to appraise and to evaluate. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul said in Acts 20, chapter 24, Acts 20, 24, he was talking about the things that he had gone through. And then he knew, oh, he was going to Jerusalem. This was what was going to happen to him. And he said that none of these things move me. He said, neither count I my life there unto myself. Why? He says, so that I might finish my course. So everybody who is going somewhere needs to take stock of what you have done, how far I've gone and where I'm going. Who needs to take stock? Somebody in whom resources have been invested. Somebody has invested in you. You want to start a business, somebody gives you a loan, gives you some resources to do it. And you just keep running. You are not checking whether... You know, what you're doing, you're on the right path. Have resources been invested in you? Do we know that we have been invested in by God? Our life, the Bible says, it breathed into our nostrils. It says, if after he formed man, he breathed into his nostril, and man became a living soul. He gave us our breath, his breath. We became living. And then he redeemed us with the blood of Jesus. It was a big price. Because he loved us. He gave his only begotten son. It was a big gift. So he has invested in you. When Jesus came, after he did the work of redemption, what did he do? He said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send to you a helper. He sent the spirit and he said to the disciples, stay in Jerusalem until you're endued with power. And he says, when power comes upon you, you'll be able to do the work. He sent the Holy Spirit to come and indwell you. He has invested in you. He has invested every resource that we need to live. The Bible says he has given us all that pertains to life and godliness. The Bible says, for we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, even though that he was rich, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, he became poor that you and I, through his poverty, we might be rich. The Bible says, by the stripes of Jesus, he took the stripes so that you and I can be healed. 
Have you been invested in? If he has invested in you, then you need to take stock. Hallelujah. Who needs to take stock? Somebody who knows that there's, he needs to generate returns. Hallelujah. You and I are expected to generate returns. We see the parables in the Bible. Matthew chapter 25, we know the parables, Matthew chapter 19. Talking about the talents. Talking about those that were giving pounds. And when the time for review came, and they said, we are not, uh, there's nothing, we don't have anything to show. We know the consequence of that. May that not be our lot in the mighty name of Jesus. We have been bought with a price, so the Bible says. And we, 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 we are expected to generate returns. Praise the Lord. Somebody who knows that there's a time frame for the assignment that he has. Look, if you have forever to do whatever you have been given to do, you probably don't worry about, you know, I need to start checking, reviewing, and appraising. If you, I have forever to do it. But if you know that the assignment you have been given has a time frame, then there's urgency in the matter. The assignment you and I have to do for God in our lives is not forever that we can do it. There's a time when we will not be able to do it again. Jesus said, I must walk the works of him who sent me while it is day. Because the night comes when no man can walk. There's a time frame. In the book of Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. It's because the time is limited. So when you have limited resources of time, you don't waste it. You appraise every step, every time. That's why when, we, when they give us goals, they say, okay, it, it must be measurable. There must be timeline to it and all of that. So you, you and I don't have forever. What you can do, what you could do 10 years ago, you probably cannot do it again today. What I'm doing now probably will not be able to, you know, do it so actively in another 15 years. You have a time frame. And if you know that, then you need to take stock. Somebody who knows that there will be a day of reconciliation. There's going to be a day when you and I are going to give account. Romans 14 verse 12. Romans 14 verse 12. He says, So then every one of us will give an account of himself to God. You see, most of the parables that Jesus told, he always talked about the householder going and coming back. He always talked about a time coming when he's going to return. And we're going to give accounts. So when we know there's a day when we're going to reconcile things, then you should know that we'll take stock. Praise the Lord. Every one of us needs self-assessment. You know, regular self-assessment. Have I gone? This is assignment that I have. For those of us who have been in Christ for a long time, there's a likelihood of us being very familiar with God, too familiar. You know, I know how these things operate. We know the language, praise the Lord, hallelujah, God is good, it is well, and all of that, even when it is not well in our spirit. So, the Bible says, let him that thinketh is standard do what? Take heed, lest he falls. It is in the process of taking heed that you appraise yourself as you go along the way. For those of us who are just coming in newly into Christ, so, you know, we're still, it is also good that you check it time. Am I in line according to his word? I pray that when it comes to reconcile accounts, you and I will not be found wanting in the mighty name of Jesus.